Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Craig Perra, and you are listening to Sex Afflictions and Porn Addictions, a show to help you create healthy sexuality and a great life. Welcome to the new sexual revolution where men are reclaiming their sexual power. If you are here, you probably have a fair to great sense of the destructive power of your sexual energy. Um, I want to tell you that there is the another side of this. The other side of this, the other side of this hill um, is one where you've embraced its constructive power. So welcome to the new sexual revolution. And if you are um, listening to me live, um, please, if you're not, Follow me on YouTube or Twitch or LinkedIn or Facebook and Twitter. And if you do that, you'll be able to join these conversations. Um, at the end, I like to have um, Q&A. Um, so please, I'd love to get a great group here to be able to answer your questions. And if you have any questions and you are here live, hello, 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 please ask your questions um, in the chat. What I want to talk about today um, is from a brilliant man. His name is James Clear, and the name of his book is Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits is the best book on habits out there, period. It used to be The Power of Habits by Charles Duhigg. Great, 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 great book, um, and and changed my life. Uh, this That book changed my life. This book is changing my life. If you do not subscribe to uh, Mr. Clear's his newsletter, go to jamesclear.com. Sign up for his 3-2-1 newsletter. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I was reading what he wrote and I was inspired to say, hey, this is really, really great. I want to share with you guys that um, this resource. I love sharing resources that impact me. I hate getting on somebody's list and just receiving garbage. And you know how your inbox look like if it's anything like mine. Hey, Rob. Hey, Jewel. Um, so nice to see you. So glad you guys are here. Yeah, the book is awesome. The book is awesome. I want to read to you one important part of the chapter um, before we jump in. And, and the reason for that is because, well, let me let me let me, let, me, let me read this this. So at the end of each chapter, there is a chapter summary, and these chapter summaries are all based on evidence, all based on science, all backed up in the text. So right now, I am reading for you um, the conclusions, right? The, the 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 facts that that come through a lengthy discussion. So just just recognize that um, this book is cited. Um, anyway, phenomenal book. I'm talking about chapter two here, and we're, uh, the title of that chapter is How Your Habits Shape Your Identity and Vice Versa, How Your Identity Shapes Your Habits. And I've got to tell you, I have um, great reverence and respect for um, you brothers who are out there going to your 12-step meetings and working so hard to be sober um, I salute you. I honor that journey. And um, there's a subset of people in that community who do not get value from the label sex addict and porn addict. In fact, that identity hurts them. That identity keeps them too focused on the make a habit, excuse me, the break a habit part of the equation. The identity uh, that you want going forward is not a lifetime sex addict or porn addict, or I respect why someone can say that. Um, your identity has to be the, re- connected to the make a habit part of the equation, which is uh, I am a man who prioritizes sexual help. I um, am a man of integrity. Um, I um, prioritize sexual health. I am a sexually healthy 
man, right? That's the identity. So let me read you this chapter. Then we're going to get into that 321 newsletter. And like I said, sign up at jamesclear.com. A uh, great resource. It'll really, really help you. And if you're here live, hello, and put your questions in the chat. So here's what Mr. Clear says at the end of chapter two. There are three levels of change. Outcome change, I'm sober, is an outcome change. Process change, here's the things I'm doing to create that outcome. Process change and identity change. An example of identity is I am a sex addict, which I believe is ultimately harmful long-term for most people, or certainly it's the people who find their way to me. Why? Because the most effective way to change your habits is to focus not on what you wish to achieve, but on who you wish to become. Your identity emerges out of your habits. Every action is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. What is the type of person that you wish to become? Becoming the best version of yourself requires you to continuously edit your beliefs and to upgrade and to upgrade and expand your identity. Upgrade and expand your identity. The real reason habits matter is not because they can get you better results, although they can do that, but because they can change your beliefs about yourself. So if you do have a deeply entrenched identity around, I am a sex addict, I am a porn addict, oh, there's something about that I am that just drives me crazy. Um, Ask yourself, is it helping you? Is it keeping you anchored or tethered to an identity that has you tied to the break a habit part of the equation Um, without any focus and identity on the make a habit part of the equation. I want you to think about that. Think about that and see how it feels. See how I am a porn addict. I am a man who prioritizes my sexual health. See how it feels. See how that addict label feels and compare and come up with Um, your make a habit identity. That's really the assignment from chapter two. And when I, um, and I'm going to go through the three, two, one newsletter um, that that James sends out um, every month, every week. And uh, well, I'm going to go through one of them. If I'm not inspired, I'm not going to do it, but here's a couple things. So here is, um, so yeah, if you do not have, um, if you have not been on jamesclear.com, you can sign up for his 321 newsletter. And every week, um, there are three ideas, two quotes, and one question to consider. And every time I read this, I get um, some insight, and I want to share that insight with you. And I get to ask myself some questions, too. Let's start with three ideas. Let's start three ideas. Uh, before I get to those three ideas, I just want to highlight something that Rob said in the chat. I've had low self-esteem and a low identity for years, and that definitely drove the directions of your habits. That's absolutely intriguing. That true. That like I I totally connect with that, and and that's the 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 the, the real academic educated. Uh, people far more qualified than I am who criticize that model, like physicians and psychologists and ma- licensed marriage and family therapists who criticize that ma- uh, model. Um, one is that it grossly misrepresents the true issues. I've been working with clients all over the world for nine years. I think I've been close to a thousand, if not over a thousand, including men in my group coaching program. Um, hundreds of men that I've worked with one-on-one, 27 different countries, not one of those men, not one primarily had a sex addiction problem or a porn addiction problem, primarily had a sex problem or primarily had a porn problem. Why? 
because the behavior is the symptom. So think about that identity. Think about what that means to you and think about what your make a habit identity should be. And if you're listening to me now, put it in the chat. Let me see what your positive identity um, feels right for you. Oh, I just... Identity is so important. Habits plus belief systems equal identity. And for those of you who have just joined, welcome. We're talking about James Clears' book, Atomic Habits, the best book on habits. I promise you it will change you. So let's get to, let's, let's get to um, we're going to go through three ideas, three quotes, and one question to consider this week from James's weekly newsletter, this is not me. This is his. Sign up for that newsletter. I get great value, and I predict that you will too. Here's one. The climb is the fun part. The climb is the fun part. Um, when I read that, I th- asked myself the question, um, that's certainly not always true. It, it certainly doesn't feel always true. However, it is the perspective that I want to have. Um Life is hard. Life is challenging. As you continue to grow, you, you, you will see that your joy uh, is uh, experienced in contrast to your pain and suffering. And if you live a life where you have gratitude, um, where you are climbing towards something, Right, Because if you're stuck in a dead-end job, please, enough with the platitudes of the climb is the fun part. Yes. Is there an opportunity for you to shift your perspective? Yes. Is there an opportunity for you to be less reactive, to make that situation better? Yes. But, But it's very difficult for you to internalize that reality that the climb is the fun part. Although I do encourage you to let that be an aspiration. You're going to be challenged. You are going to experience pain and you are going to experience loss. We had um, a client's dog died recently. You may have heard me talk about this. Beautiful man who I love dearly. Uh, His name starts with a K. And his dog died, Nitro. And man, he comes on the call and he is broken. He is broken, and this poor man's beautiful animal who has been with him through his separation, his divorce, to his loneliness, to his mental breakdown, through his addiction, through his recovery, through his transformation, and this beautiful animal passed away of old age. And I as a dog owner myself, and as someone who has bonded with my dog in a very deep emotional way, if you know anything about the internal family systems model, I treat my dog like I wanted my inner child to be treated. I talk to my dog like I wanted to be spoken to as a child. Um, and he's a little dog and he's well disciplined and but it is you know and and I approach him with my hands out so he knows that and this is just in my head my that the, my hands out hands are safe hands are for good touch hands aren't for violence hands aren't for hurting so 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 I've I I have this this this, this my dog has helped me do um a lot of my trauma work so I've got a deep connection um with Kelly and, and I, oh God, the thought of, of losing my dog is devastating, but my dog is going to die. People close to you um, are going to die. And, and, and here, here's the thing. I went off on a rant during this call and I'll never forget it. I'm so grateful for Kelly. I get choked up thinking about that moment. And we're close enough and he knows where my heart is. So I was able to say, and I'm not going to do it justice. It was just, God, I'm, this was just absolutely beautiful. I said, I, I, I said, he, here's, the, here's the Hallmark card. This is how I said, here's the Hallmark card that truly reflects the experience that you're having. And we're talking about someone's pet who died. I said, 
um, you know, a ho- you open the Hallmark card. I hope that you are experiencing the most painful sadness, vacancy, loss, emptiness, and pain imaginable. I hope that this loss is devastating to you and it you're wondering how you can move on. I hope that you are weeping because of your loss. See, here's the thing. The only way that losing a pet becomes painful, the only way that, why is that devastating to him? Why is it devastating to him? It's devastating him because he has experienced the true love of a pet. He has connected with that animal in such a powerful way. If he didn't connect with that animal in such a powerful way, he, you know what I'm saying? The pain and the suffering comes from the connection. It is the other side of that connection. The climb is the fun part. And having that perspective and being able to understand your suffering in perspective um, can bring you great value. Like I said, if you're stuck in a dead end job, um, you know, okay, you know, perspective and and climb is the fun part. Yeah. And but when you look back and and you've left that place and you're in a better place, you're grateful for the journey. It's because of that experience that pushed you to start looking for another job, brothers. Sisters, please do not forget that we are in the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of mankind. There has never been a better time for you to monetize what you're great at, to get another job, to work someplace who needs your skill set someplace else. There has never been a better time. The climb is the fun part. The second um uh, uh, remark is more around the business side. And here, here's what he says. And it, it's, I want to give you some perspective on this. Good marketing can sell once, but only a good product can sell twice. In my line of work, that's called lifetime customer value. Do people um, buy from me um, and, and buy, you know, in, in, in my case, my long-term support? And, and a lot of people do. I'm very blessed because of that. But I want to give you a perspective from the employee perspective, because a lot of you guys listening work for someone else. And this this perspective really changed me. Let me read the quote. Good marketing can sell once, but only a good product can sell twice. In the long run, your performance reverts to the value that you provide. The question that I have for you is, what is the value that you provide? And right now, I'm going to share with you the best, one of the best pieces of advice I had gotten from somebody. And for brothers who are here listening, let me know in the chat if you are an employee or if you own your own company. Here's the thing about employees, okay? When you're the employee, you're in the one down power dynamic. Yes, boss, I'm going to do what boss says. You feel disempowered. You've got watching you, someone scrutinizing your every move. Um, you know, Maybe you feel small, but this perspective will change you. Do not ever see yourself as an employee. Instead, See yourself as an independent contractor, an entrepreneur presently with one client. You are selling your services to one client. You are an entrepreneur. You are a business owner. You are an independent contractor where you have sold your services to this company in as a result, you've outsourced human resources, you've outsourced payroll, you've outsourced um, how the insurance, blah, blah. You, you've outsourced all those responsibilities. And here's what happened when you put yourself, hey, I, I've, I'm an independent contractor. I've got uh, one primary client, my boss, um, and I've got other key stakeholders that I work with, my employees and other bosses and other people in the company. These are my clients. Um, this, this is... This is my, um, I am, I am um, 
an entrepreneur selling my services to, to one business and one client being my boss. Um, because when you do that, it has you focused on value, the value that you can provide. And you may find that, hey, there's a hole over here where I can provide more value. It, it, because what happens is as an employee, you stay in this narrow little box. When you start to think of yourself as an independent contractor, you start to see opportunities differently. And you don't feel like you're in that one down position. You, 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 again, you're an independent contractor, a business owner, a sole proprietorship with one customer and, and, and one key customer being your boss. Think about that perspective. And if love to talk about it next time. It completely changed me. It really, really helps my clients. I hope I did justice in explaining that concept. But in summary, if you are an employee, think of yourself as an independent contractor, focus on the value that you provide to that employer and that person, that your client, and ask yourself, is there another place where my value would be better received or where um, I um, can provide more value elsewhere. Yes, you take ownership of every project. And, and you, it, it just, listen, try it. Over the next few days, we got Rob and Jay. Think, just, just, just try it. You know, Rob's on disability. Eventually, you want to own your own business. Well, there is no better time. There is no better time to put yourself out there. Brothers, this is the era of the side hustle. And I've seen so many people side hustle because they're primary, because you're not just selling to your local geographic area. You're selling to the entire world. There are amazing, amazing opportunities, and you'll be better at finding those opportunities if you refer to yourself as an independent contractor. Here's the next one. Motivation comes and goes. If you want to do something consistently, consistently, then don't pick a level of difficulty that requires great motivation. Make it easy enough and simple enough that you'll do it even when you don't feel very motivated. Motivation comes and goes. If you want to do something consistently, then don't pick a level of difficulty that requires great motivation. Make it easy enough and simple enough that you'll do it even when you don't feel very motivated. Some of my favorite advice. This is my favorite advice. I love giving it. I love the look on clients' faces when I give it to them. I see their head tilt and I lower the bar, right? So they cut, they, they've been failing. We've set a goal for themselves. They're failing. They're unable to do X amount of exercises. They're unable to practice mindfulness every day for um, 10 minutes. They're, uh, they're failing. Lower the bar. Lower the bar. Because when you do do that, you embrace the principle of Kaizen goal setting. Kaizen goal setting turns the whole attainability component of a SMART goal, and a SMART goal is specific, measurable, attainable, the big A, relevant and time bound, relevant to your strategic plan and time bound. There are a couple of different versions of the R, but I, 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 I use relevant. Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, um, and time bound. That's a SMART goal. Where most people fail is attainability. So they hit a low point, and, and, you know, typical in my world, right? Someone hits a low point. There is a crisis. Um, they're, you know, going to stop doing something. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, I understand your wife is angry. I understand there is suffering. I understand there is pain. Um, but you've been doing this habit since you were a child every day. 365 days a year, and it has become your primary numbing, coping, and escaping strategy. And I get it. You want zero, and I want you to accomplish that goal. And let's set a B goal. Let's set a B goal because, see, I have to create a 
um, uh, um, uh, like a feedback loop, which says, hey, um, I didn't accomplish my primary goal. I hit my secondary one. Good. Let's build on that. So, so, so important. Kaizen goals will change your life. In my uh, men's group training program, we have a running 30-day mindfulness challenge. And the, the challenge is to meditate for 60 seconds per day. Most people can't do it. They're not bad. Like I, What I love about that challenge is we set the bar so low in people's minds. I know it's not low. I know most of them are going to struggle with it. That's the brilliant of this Kaizen goal because it forces them to look at the system in which the goal is being completed. It forces them to, um, you know, prioritize that, to anchor that habit to an existing habit. So one of my favorite pieces of advice is lower the bar. All right. And so those of who, those of you who've joined me late. We are going through um, the weekly newsletter from James Clear, three, two, one, um, three ideas, two quotes, and one question to consider. We've just gotten through the three ideas, and now let's get to uh, two quotes from others. Uh, from Adam Grant, from uh, uh, who is a psychologist and author on criticism. Criticizing is easy and fast. Creating is difficult and slow. The two hours you spent on a book or movie usually took two years to produce. Anyone can tear down someone else's work. The true test of insight is whether you can help them improve it or build something of your own. I have a very natural, critical like I can walk into a room and see all the things that are wrong with it. Um, I can talk to somebody and see all the things that are wrong. I have a gift in finding those flaws. And I got some of those gifts from my mother um, and my father who held me to very, very high standards um, and pushed me to be the best that I can possibly be. Uh, but also resulting in a profound sense of self-loathing and an eye that can find every flaw every flaw. It comes very natural to me. And so I got to check that, right? I got to check that. And so one, certainly I want to be kind, always, always be kind. Um, and I love, I love, I love, I love. I earned the nickname Toyota at the Hartford Financial Services Group. And it is a nickname. Uh, Mike O'Hearn, a co-worker, gave me that nickname who I love. I know he's not listening, but Mike, care so much about you. We jammed together. He played drums. I played guitar. We worked on a couple of projects together. And he called me Toyota because here, and I don't even know if this is true about Toyota. He said, Toyota is great for taking other people's ideas and making them better. And that, that gives me great pride. I love being able to take what someone else has done, put it together in a way that makes it better for me. It's why um, I'm so proud of the mindful habit curriculum and where it's evolved to and, and, and where it started when I pulled from here, pulled from there, and, and, and ultimately took my own ideas and, and worked it into this behavior change modality that I've trained counselors and therapists. Um, there's a guy here locally in California who built his entire his, his online program based on the mindful habit system, um, uh, therapist Tony Overbay. Um, um, uh, the path back program is based on the mindful habit system. So anyway, um, criticizing is fast is easy. Creating is difficult and slow. Here is the uh, second quote. And I think you guys are going to think this is interesting. Physician Chris Ballas, more commonly known under his pen name, the last psychiatrist on the goal of adulthood. Hmm. These are things that make you go, hmm, hmm, I'm, I'm, I'm still processing this. Now, I, before I get to the quote, I am in my purpose every single day. I am living a life that I'm proud of. I love what I do uh, for the right clients. I'm great at what I do. I, um, and managing my, my mental health and physical problems uh, in a way um, that that is, you know, making me feel good about myself. 
And um, so this is easy for me to say. I just want to, it's easy for me to say. But here, here, here's a quote. The goal of adulthood is to let go of other possible existences and to make the best of the one. A successful adult is one who understands that it doesn't matter which life you ultimately pick, only one that you live well. The goal of adulthood is to let go of other possible existences and to make the best of the one. A successful adult isn't one who understands that it doesn't matter which life you ultimately pick, only that you live it well. And and I get it, right? There's always something going to be better. There's there, there's someone out there who's doing better than I am. There's someone out there whose book is, is, is finished quicker. There's someone out there who's on the third version of their workbook, and I'm still only working on my second. There, there's people out there who have grown faster than we've grown, right? There's always something else. There's always somebody else. And, and what I've learned um, I am definitely assertive. I'm definitely driven. I definitely uh, want to be successful. There's no question about that. But on my terms, in my way, that makes me feel good about myself, that isn't going to grind me into the ground like I did in my previous executive careers, ultimately like a shell of a man, um, you know, numbing, coping, and escaping because I wasn't proactively managing my mental health issues. So this is an interesting quote. I think it is, and I, I, I invite you to, because within it, there's gratitude, right? Gratitude for what you do have. Gratitude for the life that you do have, knowing that there's always someone else who has it worse. Um, and within that, that doesn't mean to stay stuck in a situation that sucks, that doesn't mean that you unnecessarily suffer and stay in a job that like literally could care less about you and is grinding you into the ground. As Rob in the chat says, the cure is the aggressive pursuit of a great life. My truth. That is my truth. Go look at my clickbait video on YouTube, The Cure for Sex and Porn Addiction. I'm not changing the title because it's my truth. The cure is the aggressive pursuit of a great life. So, so think about this. Think about this. Be grateful for where you are and where do you want to go, right? Where do you want to go? Here's a question for you. This gets to feeding the right wolf. And for those of you who've joined me, Rob and Jewel, who else we got here? Say hi in the chat. I'd love to hear your answer to this question. And you guys can join me. I'm going to put this link in the chat. No, you know what? I haven't done that yet. Let me research what this is. But if any of you guys are interested in joining me anonymously, asking me questions, um, I would absolutely love that. It would be part of like a radio show. Um, you know, I've seen other people doing it really, really well. There's a part of me that's afraid because we're live and you can imagine some of the questions that I get and the pranks that I get. Um, I actually... I think should add a segment to the show. No, no, because the, if I, I'll, I'll, I was going to say I should add a segment to the show on the pranks that I get, but what behavior would that incentivize, right? More pranks. And I don't want to deal with that. My support, I don't want them dealing with that either. All right. So um, one question for you. What is one of your natural gifts? How can you spend more time leveraging it? What is one of your natural gifts? How can you spend more time leveraging it? My natural gifts is helping people understand and process their trauma and help them heal their trauma, help them build on that amazing work that they did in therapy and provide them with a practical perspective to um, connect with those wounds, treat those wounds, um, and, and, and sustainably. It's not a one-time event. That's my gift. That's my gift. And when we, as a business, and we've been you know, growing over the course of the past nine years, when we, there was a time when I was doing everything, literally everything, 
everything. There are so many different systems that are required to make this machine run. As we've gotten bigger, those systems have gotten more complicated. I have coaches that work for me now. I have a tech guy um, that's like half time um, that works for me. Uh, my wife runs the operation. And when we took those responsibilities away from me, one, I was better. I, I couldn't do it. I was grinding myself into, into the ground. I have to focus on what I do best. So what do you do best? What do you do best? Rob's one of his natural gifts are encouragement, listening, and compassion. Yes, 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 yes. And and when you find, when you when you find that gift, now listen, not everyone is in a place where they can monetize that gift, where they can, you know, may, maybe there are certain attributes of that gift um, that they use um, in their in their professional lives, uh, but understanding those gifts both you know personally too but and professionally helps you feed the right wolf helps you um find jobs that reward those gifts and when i look at my last um downward spiral 11 years ago at insurance a total disaster um now should i have been able to do the job should i have been able to manage the pressure yes and when, when you look at the skill set required for that job uh, and saw um, the, um, you know, things I hate to do and things I suck at, like that was the job description. That was the job description. I was just so desperate to get a job and frankly so excited to come out here to California. It's one of the best decisions we ever made. We absolutely love it out here. Um, our son, uh, special needs has some challenges, gets the most amazing services, the most amazing services. So anyway, it brought us to the right place. Um, but understanding those gifts is really, really important to help you tap into your purpose, to help you, um, monetize, um, that gift, if that's possible. Um, and Rob's talking about started his own podcast, put the title in the chat, man. I'd love to hear it and check it out. Congratulations. Congratulations. That is so awesome. Rob started a podcast. And listen, think about what it takes to do that nowadays. A few clicks. Get a picture on Fiverr.com. Someone will do it for five bucks. Get your little, your little, your little uh, um, um, your, you know, your, your little image for your podcast. Boom, boom, boom. Like, now you got to promote it and, and you got to you know, put the right words in so people find you. The world is changing, brothers and sisters. The world is changing. I heard this quote. I don't remember who said it, but they, they were able to back it up with, with you know, charts and graphs that look pretty official that we are in the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of humankind. Um, meaning more going from up here um, down to, um, you know, normal folks like us. So I want you men and women to uh, embrace that reality. I want to inspire you to get out of that job that you are stuck in. You have more value to bring. Um, yes, you are better than that. Um, yes, there are other opportunities. You know, And if you ask yourself this question, I really like asking this question, contemplation and disability. Thank you, Rob, for sharing that. And anybody who's struggling um, with contemplation and disability and, and Rob's ready to ask some questions. Oh, that would be awesome. Let me figure out how to do that. Yeah, you know, maybe I just have to post this link in the chat. Maybe that does it. Let's see what happens. If you, if you click on that. You cannot add channels to this stream. Huh. Oh, yeah, you can. Jules, natural gifts are listening, drawing, and using your imagination. Like, that is so awesome. And ask yourself, are you in your purpose? Are, are, are you, how often are you using those gifts? 
And my experience is the more people are using those gifts, either um, they're happier because they're using them in the context of a hobby and they've got a job that they do not love, but it pays the bills. They're happy. They're secure. They're close to retirement. They're not leaving, but they need that charge. They need that purpose someplace else. So what percentage of your job um, is focused on that purpose? When you look at what I'm great at, what I love to do, what feeds me, what, you know, my natural gifts, this is it. This is it. I am so blessed. And that's why I wanted to preface some of the things I said about the goal of adulthood to let go of other possible existences. Um, and make the best of the one you have. Make the best of the one you have. So one question for you to contemplate is what is one of your natural gifts and how can you spend more time leveraging it? Now you can spend more time leveraging it. All right, let's do this. I think we are going to have our first guest. Hey, what's up, Rob? Hey, Coach Greg. It's uh, it's nice to be on here with you. Wow, my first live guest. So nice to hear from you, man. Where, where are you calling from? I'm calling from New York, uh, upstate. Oh, the great city of New York. I bet you're happy. It's starting to warm up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the weather is definitely getting nicer, which is really nice. Awesome, awesome. What um, what hit you and what some of the things I talked about today? Did anything land a little closer to home? And Definitely the, the identity part really hit home for me. It's because, uh, you know, just for years... I kind of had just a low self-esteem and identity and, you know, it's something that I kind of always struggled with. And, and so that, so that definitely hit home. And, and what, um, what was that? Do you, um, what was that negative identity? Can you remember like, Oh, I'm a loser. One of my identities, you know, when I was felt really bad about myself, I'd say I'm a piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I was, Definitely more like I'm a loser, you know, I can't, you know, I can't do this or, or, you know, it's just like, I'm not, I'm not worthy or I'm not deserving of, you know, really anything. And what have you done to, um, what, what have you found helps that changes that identity? I think just like my, my thoughts and you know what i put into my mind and it's like you know the um doctor the uh what's that book uh it was with dr burns it's feel good feel good i think the book's called and yeah, um you know the yeah, cognitive really, behavioral therapy yeah and, um that really like started to really change it because we do have control over our thoughts and you know uh we don't have to give into those thoughts which is really, really awesome. And, you know, those thoughts don't define who we are. It's just, it's just a thought. It's just something that popped into your head. And uh, that, that really changed, changed the game for me. Yeah, you are not your thoughts. You are not your mind. Um, you do not have to believe every crazy thing that your mind throws at you. And the chances are that your programming um, mm -hmm has this pretty shitty, you know, and that input, yeah. that childhood, that self-deprecation, that identity that you talked about, Rob is, um, uh, yeah, thanks for sharing that. It's so powerful once you finally, well, and, and here's the thing, right? So once you realize that, um, yay, there's a moment of catharsis. And then you realize that, oh, wait, this isn't a one-time thing. Realizing it isn't enough. I've got to learn how to change my relationship with my thoughts long term and what are some mm -hmm. of the things that you've done to that help you meditation for sure and uh 
it's one of the one of the so I'm Christian and and I got into contemplative prayer and uh, there's a a priest his name is Thomas Keating and uh, he wrote a book called Open Mind Open Heart and uh, he refers to the mind as a river and your thoughts your your feelings even even your pain can just uh, are boats that can just float down and. You know, you, you don't have to acknowledge them. You just, well, you acknowledge them, but you don't have to let them affect you and stay there and uh, anchor. And uh, so that, that's that's really helped too. And reading a bunch, a bunch of books and yeah, um, your your podcast has definitely helped too. And yeah, it's been, it's been really good. Awesome, awesome. Well, if you're interested, Rob, and um, you're thinking about my um, core training program, email support at the mindfulhabit.com. Uh, we're going to give you like like a, a super, super surprise uh, for being my first guest um, on this live stream thing that I've been doing. And um, so nice that you're here, man. Any um, final words for our, our audience? I, you know, just keep going and, and, and keep aggressively pursuing uh, the good, the great life and uh, know that you're eventually going to get there and the hard work is absolutely going to pay off. Thank you so much, Rob. Such wise, wise and sage advice. Um, you're going to get there. And then once you do, um, you'll learn that you have to take steps to stay there. So this identity that we talked about, if you didn't catch the beginning um, of the show, um, please check it out. Um, I read the chapter summary for chapter two of the great book, Atomic Habits. If you do not have Atomic Habits, this is a you know mandatory um, read in my next level program for my one-on-one -on -one clients and my group clients it's that important it really really is it'll change the way that you think about um your bad habits and it'll really accelerate this concept that we talk about here is how these bad habits are actually serving a purpose and are meeting a need in his, his his habit cycle which i really want you to take a look at and study is Q, which is the trigger, craving the, the, the desire for whatever it is, the cookie, the sex, the, the, the drug, the gambling. Um, then there's a response that we have. And then, oh, we get it. We get a reward. This, this reward, that last word in that habit cycle is a tough one for people struggling with bad habits and addictions because it's very difficult for them to get their arms around the reality that this bad habit, their bad habit, that's causing so much pain, so much anguish in their life, um, that they're, 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 um, it, it's, 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 they don't realize that it's meeting a need, that it's serving a purpose. Um, and that need is, you know, likely going back to programming in childhood. So please, please, please check out the book Atomic Habits. Go to jamesclear.com and sign up for his 321 newsletter. He sends it out every Thursday. There's one coming out today. And if I really like it, I'm going to do another one of these. I want to thank Rob for um, joining me on my first live stream broadcast. And if you are out there and you're interested uh, in getting some feedback and you want to talk about um, your problems and you need some feedback, join me here. Um, eventually, I will get into a schedule i'm not there yet so i apologize please forgive me so you got to follow me on youtube facebook twitch linkedin um, or twitter so you get notified when i go live thank you so much rob for joining us and thank you everybody for being here um, wish you the best and uh embrace your power of choice and feed the right wolf inside you make it a great week and have an awesome weekend everybody bye bye